the Ugandans were excited about it. But there has been too many challenges, you know. Uh, in the first year, you made a loss of 102 billion. In the second year, you made a loss of 164 billion. This year, you have made a loss of 232 billion. Now, of course, there are several challenges that have occurred along the way. But we are trying to connect the dots and be sure, do we have the right people running Uganda Airlines? We are struggling to answer that question in the affirmative. CEO gets hired without procedure being followed. People applied, 40 of them, for interviews. The process was cut short. She gets hired. The qualifications, a degree, and then postgraduate training, whether it's postgraduate diploma, masters, and above, the CEO only has a bachelor's degree. Today we ask for the transcript for the bachelor's degree. It does not exist. There are issues of conflict of interest. You know that you're vouching for companies where you're connected to, conflict of interest is not declared, and so on. I, I, I am bothered that a lot worse could happen to our airlines, which Ugandans had had hope in. I am actually now wondering if the rest of the staff are qualified. Where is uh, the director commercial, the current one? She's acting director commercial. Okay. Yeah. Um, Acting Director Commercial, Regina Tebasima. She had a meeting with uh, one of the airlines. We are mm. discussing an inter interline agreement, and she had to chair that meeting. So. Beginning to connect a few things as a result of this chair. One, the reason why the interviews were cancelled for the position of the CEO. Two, the reason why there was a suggestion for change of names and why it stopped along the way. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Chair, I may regret uh, my statement when we were actually trying to to check why she did not complete the exercise of changing her names and why she could have stopped along the way. I begin to believe that, uh, Mr. Chair, for a CEO leading a very serious organization like this one, earning sums and sums of monies, and you say for the last so many 28 years you are unable to pick a transcript from your name. Once you've paid it to your name, they only give you six days to come and pick your transcript. I have ever gone through that exercise. University that she's talking about is where I studied from. And we've gone through this exercise. Once the records are straight that you've ever been in that university, you cleared everything at that university, chair, the transcript will be given to you in a very short period of not less than a month. I therefore want to conclude that, chair, I think we are dealing with a different person, not the CEO of Uganda Airlines. I thank you. You see, Uganda Airlines is um, a flagship project for our country, and uh, a number of Ugandans were excited about it. But there has been too many challenges, you know. Uh, in the first year, you made a loss of 102 billion. In the second year, you made a loss of 164 billion. This year, you have made a loss of 232 billion. Now, of course, there are several challenges that have occurred along the way. But we are trying to connect the dots and be sure, do we have the right people running Uganda Airlines? We are struggling to answer that question in the affirmative. CEO gets hired without procedure being followed. People applied, 40 of them, for interviews. 
the process was cut short, she gets hired. The qualifications, a degree, and then postgraduate training, whether it's postgraduate diploma, masters, and above, the CEO only has a bachelor's degree. Today we ask for the transcript for the bachelor's degree, it does not exist. There are issues of conflict of interest. You know that you're vouching for companies where you're connected to, conflict of interest is not declared, and so on. I, I, I am bothered that a lot worse could happen to our airlines, which Ugandans had, had hope in. I am actually now wondering if the rest of the staff are qualified. Where is uh, the director commercial, the current one? She's acting director commercial. Okay. Yeah. Acting uh, director commercial, Regina Tebasima. She had a meeting with uh, one of the airlines. We are mm. discussing an inter interline agreement, and she had to chair that meeting, so. Because she didn't come today. these documents you have submitted, minimum qualification and experience for director commercial. Chair, chair, just proceed. I request, if through you, that uh, either the head of HR or the ED takes us through the qualifications of, the, mm. of, of that uh, head commercial. They be on record taking us through what the qualifications that they have are. If you, if you find it, okay, Chair. Chair. Mm. I don't know whether we are done with the, the CEO. And, I, and if in case we are done, just some information on two things, Chair. One, she's doing a master's. What did she, what did she submit to qualify for a master's? Secondly, uh, we need also maybe to look at uh, appointment letters from those experiences she talks about where she, she worked from. Okay. Um, you know, yesterday, I think I was watching NTV News, and the, Madame Jennifer had an interview with NTV, and she was like saying, it doesn't matter whether I'm qualified or not, whether I have MDD, whether I got this job on the moon, it doesn't matter. What matters are the skills that I have. And uh, I felt so touched. I felt touched. And I said, Why, where is this country going? So seeing what is happening here, and uh, I, I get more shocked. But I wanted her to put it on record, Mr. Chair, through you. Whether she does, it doesn't matter for the CEO to have qualification. Because she said it, that matters skills. Whether I got this job on the moon, whether I got it bragging around as if she's the owner of this country. But I think for the You, you know, um, there is a member of parliament some years ago who was dismissed from parliament for not having the requisite academic qualifications. And this person said, but does it matter? I speak good English. I know how to represent my people. Of course, to him it did matter. But to the law, to the laid down procedures, it mattered. So yes, I saw uh, Madam Jennifer speaking uh, arrogantly, in my view, saying these things don't matter. Uh, but I dare say, what she said doesn't matter. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it doesn't matter that she doesn't care. Mr. Chairman, I think the so. laid down procedures are what is important. So I don't care whether she thinks I can run Uganda Airlines as CEO uh, without the requisite qualifications, even the ones she's talking about with a bachelor's degree. It is non-existent on record. You, you so I don't care that she doesn't care. Uh, the, 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 the record cares. And I think we want to stick to that. Colleagues, let's move. Uh, let's not dwell so much on this issue. We have captured what we have captured, that we have on record. We, we shall take a decision. Um, of course, we'll need to look at you know, those appointment letters as well for these past positions. Uh, because what you wrote in your CV, some of the positions, I don't know if those were the job titles. We want to ascertain that. 
Um, chair, so, what uh, about Chimosho is suggesting? Chair, uh, uh, no, there is also a need for us to know the reason of the first interdiction. Well, she, she told us yesterday that she was fired, she was terminated because of poor performance. She said that yesterday. But we, we, That's need, what to we need to find out, uh, mm. Honorable Chair, because it is very hard for us to believe her now because her statements keep on, keeps on changing all the time. That's okay. We'll, we'll interact some more with uh, the board and, and all of that. Yes, no. Honorable Pius. Uh, Honorable Chair, as the, the way she thinks, I would also suggest that she presents her birth certificate. We may be shocked that she was born in 1980 and graduated in 1994. So let her also present to us her birth certificate. Okay, I, I think that's fair because now that these academic documents are not existing... Chair, very brief. Eh? We want to have a... a Did she give us her interdiction letter? Did you? Okay, you will present it. I, I have a copy myself, uh, but... Uh, no, but I was not interdicted, I was terminated. She was terminated, actually, not interdicted. There are two, those two words that Termination are... is, please go home, don't come back. Interdiction is, okay, let's review, let's, you know, uh, processes and so on. Termination is, we have fired you, go, don't return. Uh, please avail to us a copy on record. Um, I got a copy myself through my ways, but it would be good that... Uh, you bring it to us on record. Okay, so I, I, I wanted us to establish the other members of staff because we have been reviewing these documents that you have forwarded to us and there are several other senior staff members that don't have the requisite qualifications. According to the documents you've given us, this is not just my words, yeah? Um, I don't know whether it might not take long, do you, Honorable Chimosho was suggesting we ask the HR manager to, to, to read to us Yes, Honourable. Uh, procedure. I, I think, personally, at first I thought this process was taking long, but as we review the other, what we call key issues of the Auditor General, this is the most important, in my opinion, because we'll be looking at losses, mismanagement. Let us, first of all, evaluate as a committee the calibre of the people in charge and control. So I think we, let us take time to go through the CVs and qualifications of the individual behind. Because I think for the first time, Ms. Patrach is saying the truth, that you see, it does, doesn't matter how, in this country, people are just coming in and doing vlogu vlogu. So losses after. So I think let's get, we have gotten the opportunity of now looking at agencies and get to know, because most people are going to, uh, the competent people are going to cut her again. You know, incompetent people who have failed exams, uh, CEOs. So I, I think let us get time to look at this. Then we'll go to the other nitty gritties of the one. You see the losses in billions each and every agency. Maybe this is the problem. Thank you. I, I agree, Honorable Sibambi. In fact, if you notice, that's why we have not yet even gone back to the Auditor General's report. I was deliberate because this is more important. It, it tells you why there are all those issues in the Auditor General's report being raised. The law says, you know, the, the fraud procedures not being followed. I think this is telling because the, the company is run by people. So the people are the ones who are meant to do what is right or who end up doing what is wrong, as we are seeing in the Auditor General's report. So uh, let, let, let's ask the acting manager HR Madam Nanono, uh, this, let, let me give you this so that you let us know. The director commercial, what the qualifications are, the required qualifications, and uh, what the qualifications of the current holder of the position are. Director commercial. The minimum qualification and experience, a bachelor's degree in commerce, business in a recognized setting, strong organization, airline commercial management experience with demonstrated competences in e-commerce, knowledge of digital marketing techniques and technology, best product distribution systems, sales channels, and setting up a call center, 
knowledge of airline pricing, revenue management, interline services, and AATA airline practices, able to manage multiple startup stations across the target airline network with ability to negotiate effectively at all levels, ability to coordinate multiple activities, including travel agency, GSA, tour operator, OTA relationships, office setup, establishing contracts, recruitment of staff, building up sales channels and preparing for inaugural events, strong mentoring, coaching and managerial capability with good communication and negotiation skills, high level of integrity and professionalism with a clean track record of performance. Okay, so that's the minimum requirement. So the current holder of the position, what are their qualifications? That's Madam Regina who? Regina Tebasima, the acting commercial director. Her education background, July 2022 to date, Graduate College of London, ongoing. She's doing a bachelor's in business management, level four and five. She is doing? Twenty, because it's ongoing. Okay. Then 2022, Amadeus. What's the highest qualification that she has, as we speak? She has different certificates in airline training. Okay, let, let me have that back. So that's director commercial. The minimum qualification is a bachelor's degree in business administration or, you know, commerce or a closely related discipline. The highest qualification is a certificate. No, chair. Chair for, 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 she has. for guidance purposes. Mm. Formally, what is on record is senior six. Because those certificates you see, unless they are presented here, they could be workshop certificates. No, no, for a fact. And I challenge anyone to bring them here. What is formal on record is a senior six. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, uh, we're perusing many of your CVs and uh, you included, and I guess it's your right, you know, we had the two days training at Golden Tulip. We had the two, three days training. And that's important for continuous value addition. But it, it doesn't merit what we are talking about, yeah? So clearly... The highest qualification that this lady has, the acting Chair, director of commercial, is a senior six certificate. Chair, could we know how much she's getting from the airline? Again, is the certificate qualification? Okay, we, we will establish that. Um, but again, this is very telling. Because you see, if, if you don't have qualified people running Uganda Airlines, it is not going to thrive. There is not going to be progress. And that's our concern. These are documents you've given us. At least these ones, I, I did get them through my own means. These ones you have given us. Okay, let's look at another. Uh, this is Director of Flight Operation. Uh, please pass uh, it Mr. Chairman, HR Manager. Yes, I think the HR should confirm mm -hmm. to this committee that in her opinion as HR, is that member really qualified under what you have just read for, for the committee for the record as director acting director you see in, in law we say receipts alokwita the facts speak for themselves the, the, the director as the manager hr confirm I would also want to know whether there is a appraisal for these staff. Can you appraise what? Hmm? How can you appraise a person? <laughs> yes, Madam HR. Microphone is off. Please draw it closer. Then Director of Flight Operations. The minimum qualification and experience. Director of Flight Operations shall be an active or retired senior pilot in command, holding or having held an airline transport 
pilot license, including instrument rating appropriate to Uganda Airlines type of operations issued and validated by Uganda Civil Aviation Authority. At least three years experience as pilots in command in a commercial air transport of large aircrafts, management skills including selection, coaching and counseling team members, evaluating performance, team building, administration and operational planning, excellent communication skills, both written and verbal, including an ability to interact with all levels of the organization, computer literate and able to work independently to prepare reports to management, possess strong technical instructors and examiners background rules, access, acceptable to the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, and possesses comprehensive knowledge of aviation regulations, requirements, and procedures. Okay. The qualifications of the holder. He has an airline transport pilot license, stroke ICAO Uganda. Number TA263, Nigeria 4246. And that's what is in the minimum qualifications and ATPL. A what? An airline transport pilot license. A salary is supposed to be a private affair. But when you're a public official, it's, it's different. Uh, but now the issue of the name, uh, honorables, I am personally not bothered about the reason why she would change her name. It's okay, yeah? Our only challenge is consistency. Documents, you know, not adding up. That, that's, that's the challenge, you know? Because if you swear an affidavit, if you register a deed poll, importantly, with URSB, you have changed your name. That means your name changes. Uh, so, did, and, and now going forward, you're not going by that. Even, you know, legally speaking, you are a different person. So it, it, it raises questions of integrity. You know, are there shady things that are happening? The issue is not the reason for changing the name. I don't care what the reason is. Legally speaking, you know, today I can wake up and I register my name as just Joel. Or I can even change it to Marvin, just Marvin. Say for me now, from today onwards, my new name is Marvin. No one has the right to ask me why I've changed my name. It's my decision, yeah? But you see, going forward, I cannot then refer to myself as Joel Senyonyi because legally I am now Marvin. So that's, that's, the, diff that's, that's the issue altogether, yeah? Uh, and that's what we are trying to get to the bottom of because change your name, that's okay. People change their names and it's all right. The reason is none of our business. Could have been convenience, could have been you thought maybe let me get a cooler name or I don't know, I don't care. My concern is that now the name has changed, but going forward you're not using it. What 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 happened? Is there something that is trying to be hidden and, and all of that? Those are the issues that are of concern to us as a committee. Our concerns are issues of procedure, not personal issues. That's why I have objected to those asking her, why did you change your name? If she wants, she can answer that question. If she doesn't want, I will not. We're not going to go personal. We're going to go procedural. And for me, my, my concern is, especially just like a piece of advice to Madame Jennifer, um, I think it is just courteous for you to realize that, yes, I made a mistake, and at this point, I made a mistake. This is just a one-pager. It was just a one-pager. So easy to read through. We... I think we, we are a very lazy fair country. I pity anyone who thinks someone should be one person and a different person at one time. If we made a, this report about Bamuturachi and she wants to challenge it tomorrow, when actually she's registered as in her previous names, she would defeat us. It is only important that if you're a public officer, you are known by who you are. So that whatever recommendations and whatever action you take in the interest of the public, you are personally held accountable to them. Certificates read different names. Uh, 
and, and then other documents say other things, then there is a deed poll, you know. Um, those that have survived, there are those who present a deed poll like this one in court and they say, the name on my national ID, the name that is registered on the voters register is here in the deed poll. So what is on my certificate, senior six and so on, is captured here. So it's, it's not a personal issue, it's a legal matter. And like Honorable Chimosho is saying, tomorrow, Madam Jennifer, I don't know whether now Jennifer Leenkai Arnold or Jennifer Bamturaki could go to court and say, but that is not who I am. So it, it's important that the, the, these issues are, are settled properly because it's a legal matter. It's, it's not a personal matter at all. Uh, the CEO to confirm her true names and she made that clear that she is Jennifer uh, Bamutula. Bamutulaki. Sorry, I'm I don't know. I don't want to spell your name. Uh, the other one maybe is Asi. Bamsime. Musime, sorry. So she has confirmed her names. I therefore want to ask Chair that we have so many issues. Let's move forward. They attracted this deed poll. You said that? And yes, remember, I you did. are on oath. Yes, I did. How did you retract it? Um, I'll have to find, because I have a new lawyer. How did person. you retract it? I spoke to my lawyer mm -hmm. to do the process, so I'll follow up. Do you know if the lawyer did the process? No, sir, I'm not sure, but I'll find so out. So now, Madam Jennifer, but she didn't. do you see the position you're putting us in? Because initially you said you actually retracted. Okay, and now you are saying you instructed the lawyer. You don't know if the lawyer did. And, and colleagues, you can't just abandon a name. You don't say I've abandoned it. It's a legal process. When you register a name, that becomes your new name. If you want to change it, you register another. Yeah? That's the legal process, colleagues. You can actually change your name a hundred times as long as you go through the legal process. So if you don't go through a legal process, then the most recent registered name is your name. So now Madame is saying, I, I instructed my lawyer to retract it. Did she follow up? No. Now, do you know why I conclude that this was not retracted? Because it would require her signature. Jennifer Bamturaki Musime. What do we do with this deed poll that you swore and registered? I'm asking you, madam, because it's you who signed that deed poll. Give me that deed poll again. Good enough, you admitted it, you signed it. So, what do we do with this deed poll? The legal process was not concluded, sir. No, but you see... The, the legal process was not concluded. So you're discussing when the legality is not concluded, sir. I'm bothered about the many seemingly small lies. I retracted it. Okay, how did you retract it? Um, I instructed the lawyer. Did you follow up? No, I, don't, I did not. Anyway, let, let's have this on record. We will determine how to deal with it. Um, because it's very confusing and we are trading a very thin line. Uh, because Man, we uh, must be sure we are dealing with the right person. Without knowing the source, since she has owned it, 